Hey guys, my name's Mannequin and welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro. Today's video, I'm going to talk about what's called synth routing. And um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up ES2. Sorry that we're back to ES2 and it's not all as, as intuitive as retro synth, but ES2 is a lot more powerful and it allows routing. Uh, retro synth does not and it, it kind of shows through um, as one of its weaknesses. So uh, let's see, tutorial settings and analog saw initialize. There we go. And so we're back to this plain old preset. La -dee -da. La -dee -da, la -dee -da. Um, so now what I want to show you today is this section down here. This is found in a variety of forms in various synthesizers, but I'll try to go over it quickly. So right now you could see that most of these are off and set to LFO one. Um, but there are some of these that are already doing something. So first of all, um, we have, I'm just going to show you this one because this one's very commonly used. This is cutoff two, which we know is this right here. Rip, 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 rip. Excuse me. And uh, we have envelope two is the source. So uh, so here we go. Let, let, let me start from scratch here. The target is cutoff two. So this is what is going to be affected, the target. Um, now we have uh, via, which is um, it's something that I'll talk about in a minute, but um, just kind of think of that as an in-between value that kind of adds another level of variation and the source is what is moving the target so the source is what causes movement to the target so in this case we have envelope 2 is affecting the cutoff how is it affecting it well you look right here it's affecting it in a positive sense and it's not just positive it's full so that means that it'll uh, affect from 0 to 100 um, maximum amount it'll affect the the target so what does this mean so we know the tar target is this, and we know that the source is this envelope, envelope two right here, all these different things. This is attack, decay, sustain, and release. If you um, if you didn't watch my last video on attack, decay, sustain, and release, and you don't know what those are, I suggest you go watch it now because um, that's pretty fundamental to what I'm going to do here and kind of show you. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll try to make this um, I'll, I'll try to make this simple so it doesn't get too complex. Um, so what we have is right now we know the attack is short, the decay is you know, uh, it, it's it's medium, and then it goes all the way down to back to zero because the sustain is zero, and it has a really, really, really long release for the envelope. So, what can we expect from the sound? Well, since this is at the maximum already, boosting it by um, with an envelope is not going to do anything. So, we could actually just expect a full, you know, solid note. Nothing unique at all. Now, on the other hand, if I pull this down, the default is zero. And if we look at what happens, it's added. And the source is envelope two. The, the way the source is working is instantaneous attack. So it shoots up to full since we're doing 100%, which is 1.0. Um, so it's doing 100% of the change there. So it shoots up to the maximum instantaneously because the attack is very short. And then it decays back down to zero in 650 milliseconds. So basically it'll, go, it'll shoot up here instantaneously and then it'll slowly go back down into it over 650 milliseconds. Actually it's not slowly, 650 milliseconds is about half a second. So um, so what, what can you expect here? You could expect a yo sound. And that's basically, you know, what we learned with envelopes that um, that change a filter. So, uh, so that that makes a lot of sense, and that's that's one of the things that's already there. But what about all the other things here? So, essentially, what I can do is um, I could do uh, I could choose a whole bunch of targets. I could choose the pitch, the detune. The detune is uh, analog here, I believe. And um, yeah, that should be it. Yep. Um, so, so if I choose detune here and set this to zero or anything in between, I could choose how much I want it to go up or how much I want it to go down. So this will pull it up from where I start it here. And if I pull it down like that, it'll pull it down. How much just depends on how, where you place this slider and deciding where to place this slider is based on what you hear. So, um, uh, a good thing, a good thing to show is if I turn off analog, and I set this to the pitch, and I have the LFO running. Uh, so basically, it's at it's at the middle, which means it's not going to do anything right now. So I have the pitch. Um, it's affecting the pitch of all three of these, and uh, the source is LFO one. LFO one is low frequency oscillator, which is just basically 
it kind of goes up and down according to whatever pattern you have here. So it just goes up and down. Yeah, okay, just just like the modulation plugins. Um, if you if you saw my video on that. Um, so so here it's like we're modulating a target the target. That's all we're doing with the LFO. Um, so what we could do here is we could choose the rate. I kind of want this to be a. Um, I kind of want it to be a high rate, but not too high. So, um, we'll just kind of listen to this in a second here, but now I'm going to have the pitch go up a little bit, not too much. And it'll just kind of like wobble up and down. This is the sound you'll get. And let me open up the filter back up so you could hear it when it's sustained, when it has sustained. So that's a little too fast. I didn't want it quite that fast. So I'm going to pull this down. And then I could turn up the amount. So it's just kind of making the pitch go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And, um, you know, you could do something similar. You could just change the shape of the LFO and yada, 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 yada. And it kind of goes like bow, 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 except for much faster. And then you could choose different things, but I'm not talking about LFOs right now, just because LFOs are pretty simple in the way they work. It's just something that oscillates up and down depending on whatever pattern you have chosen. And rate is just the speed of it. Higher is higher speed, lower is lower speed. Pretty simple. Um, the delay and decay are not things that you'll use commonly, so you don't need to worry about those. So that's, you know, I just kind of showed you choosing a random pr parameter as a target. You just choose whatever you want the target to be, and then you could, um, you could, uh, you could modulate it with something, um, something, some other parameter. So uh, let's say I want to change both cutoffs here, and I so I choose a source. Now I could do LFO one, LFO two, envelope one, envelope two, envelope three. The pad X and Y, which is this right here, that's the pad X and Y, depending on the placement of that. Um, max is uh, basically what it does is it just boosts the value by however much you change the slider. So let's say I had um, analog right here and then I just put max and I mapped this, the target to, anal to the detune, then all I'd have to do, if I pull this up, it'd be the same as me pulling this up. So it's, it's just basically like a gain for uh, certain things per se. Uh, keyboard is the the note the 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 pitch of the note. So if you like hit a higher note, then it'll equate to a higher value. If you hit a lower note, it'll equate to a lower value. So um, so that's the way that works. Um, I could kind of show you uh, keyboard, and I'll make this the cutoff all the way down. I'm going to turn off this cutoff, and I'm going to hit a really. I'm going to pull that up all the way. So I hit a really low note, and you can't really hear it. But if I hit a high note you could start to hear it. And uh, so it's, it's if I pull this in the middle, it's, it shows up a little bit more. So you can barely hear it still. Let's try this again. There we go. It sounds very, very low pass. And if I go to a high note, it's very bright. So that's what keyboard does. It's just kind of like higher notes equal higher values. And it all it's all underneath this thing here. So a high highest value is here, lowest value is the middle. Um, so that's that's the way that works. Because this is basically just boosting. Um, and then you could do the same thing, and this just inverts it. So it's just you know higher notes pull it down more, lower notes keep it towards the center more. So that's that's all the negative is. It's just kind of the exact opposite if you flip everything upside down. So there's a whole bunch of other options that you could do. You could. Uh, you could have a side chain to this the same way you would side chain a um, a compressor. You could send a side chain in, and the volume of that you could use to change parameters. Um, I I haven't used that before, but that sounds like something that could be pretty cool to use. So, uh, so that's the whole premise of routers here, and I, or, or a router per se. The router refers to all of these, and these um, are these route something. Um, so. So yeah, it's th there's a whole bunch of options you could do. I'm kind of trying to reset everything here, just turn everything off, and because I want to show you one final thing. So typically, what this uh, this 
you see that this one has two, and the reason it's because it has a via on or via. It depends on how you want to pronounce it. So we have this. It's changing pitch one, two, and three with LFO one. Same thing that I actually did over here when I made that, except it was you could tell that it was not actually affecting it before, and that's because it had a via or via, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, and um, what this does is it was it was set to the mod wheel and it has a maximum and a minimum value. So what happens is that, that uh, the minimum value of this, that's the maximum value it could reach. And at the maximum value of this, that's the maximum it could reach. So if I pull this up here, then it makes a bit more sense. So this can go, if you have the mod wheel down at zero, which is, a, uh, it's, it's a little knob on your, um, on a MIDI controller if you haven't seen it, actually it's, kind of like a knob, kind of not. Um, but anyway, so the LFO, that would mean that it could bring the pitch up by that at most if the mod wheel's down at zero. Now, if you turn the mod, mod wheel all the way up to maximum, the LFO will go all the way up to the orange one. So, and it, uh, I think if you bring it down here, it's flipped, I, if I recall correctly, I don't know. Um, I'd have to experiment with it, but, um, but most of the time you're just gonna be doing stuff positively because that's the way it works. So um, so that's what a via does. And um, there's the one that's typically used for this is velocity. So you'll have something like cut off one and two and you could, you'll have it change with envelope two like we had before here. Um, so it'll be affected by, it'll go down like normal, except for now the maximum volume or the maximum level that the cutoff can open up to is higher if you hit the note harder or lower if you hit it softer. So it kind of sounds like this. And if I pull this all the way up, it becomes a little bit more prominent. So it really shows you the velocity here. When I hit it hard, it goes, it opens up the cutoff more. And if I hit it less, it doesn't open it up quite as much. So um, that's that's the, the this little here. Th uh, and you could invert this. I just realized that. So that would be uh, if you want to like drag it down and have it. So um, this one will still be, uh, so this is subtractive. So if I pull this up to the top, it'll subtract at, at low values. It'll subtract a lot from it. And at high values, it'll only subtract a little bit of it. So um, I'm gonna hit it softly. Of course, now the envelope is inverted also. Um, so uh, that does that's not optimal. Uh, what I'd have to do is actually do this, I think. Yeah. So the softer I hit it, the um, the softer the note is, if I hit it hard, then it stays closer to the maximum. It's only brought down a little bit as opposed to if I hit it really hard, it goes down. So um, the reason I had to do this whole thing was because um, the the direction of the envelope, if you go back to, uh, let me do another software instrument here, pull up the do -do 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 retro synth. It's remember the uh, this little envelope here. It's basically like if you got this, put a line right here and mirror flipped it so it's upside down. It kind of goes like that, and then down. So that that's what happens if you turn this to a negative number for your envelope. But uh, but it's not all that typical to do that. Typically, you just use positive values, or you have something that goes kind of in between like that. And typically, you do that with a LFO, so it kind of goes up and down instead of just up. So, um, so, but this, once again, um, it's the, the, this you're going to use occasionally. And like I said, the, the invert just kind of changes direction. So it would have made it so, uh, higher values, it subtracts more lower values, uh, of the velocity, it subtracts less. So that's that. And in case you're wondering what this little button up here, it's just bypass. So, uh, so that's pretty much it for routing. Um, it's very, very confusing uh, until you really start to use it a lot more. And sometimes even when you get used to using it, the results are kind of spontaneous. 
and random. So you might surprise yourself and not get what you wanted. But um, really, it, it just takes a bit of practice. Once you uh, just just try messing around with the stuff, find something you want to change, and um, like any setting, pretty excuse me, uh, any setting, pretty much, and um, and you could just change the amount of it by selecting a source, and then how much it affects it is done by this slider here. And if you want to do a intermediate thing, like if you want something that's velocity sensitive, you just throw velocity in the middle. If you want something that's, I don't know, um, sensitive to something else, like you could even set envelopes here. That would be very confusing to, to work with, but you can do that. Um, you could also do LFOs so that like you have, um, here we go. We'll do an LFO here and then just do the envelope here. So, sorry, I skipped something there. Uh, I realized I was hitting notes in RetroSynth instead of, because uh, it was right here, so I was going, st uh, I was not on ES2 when I was hitting notes. So, uh, sorry about that skip there, but, um, uh, so what happened here is I was trying to map the cutoff, um, so that it kind of just waves up and down. Um, that sounds cool as heck. Um, but, here we go. So it kind of opens and closes really fast, but if I change this, to LFO1 and I change this to envelope 2 then it'll follow the same pattern as my envelope um, how it goes down but it'll kind of wobble also so it should go something like this so it goes you could tell it's going down but at the same time it's kind of wobbling let me slow this down it'll be a little more obvious and maybe make the decay a bit longer So that's pretty cool. It kind of just goes uh, up and down based on that. And and then it kind of fades out based on this decay that I've set here. So it's, uh, it's just some cool stuff you could do with routing. And um, and like I said, it's, it's all about experimenting and figuring out, you know, what parameter you want to change and how you want to change it. So um, also note that sometimes it is easier to actually key in automation as opposed to doing um, a route a routing here. So sometimes if you just want something to go up for a while, it's easier to just uh, just key in automation to make it go up instead of actually routing a particular setting to go up and then have like a synchronized oscillator so that it's for one bar and it goes up like that. So that would work, but it's it's more work than just using automation. So um, just kind of you know re realize that it's a little bit different. Um, that, that like you know the, the the use case is a little bit different. Um, so you know one might be better to use than the other uh, given a particular situation. So um, that's it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, like it. If you uh, if you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. But uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.